Wonderful. Hello and welcome to TIFR. With us today is a very distinguished visitor, Professor Paul Alibazatos from the University of Berkeley, where he's a professor of chemistry and material science and nanotechnology, and also the director of the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So welcome to TIFR. And uh, Professor Alibazatos, of course, is a renowned leader in the field of nanoscience and nanotechnology. He's worked on a range of things, from quantum dots to solar cells. Now he's interested in looking at the carbon footprint of society and how science can help uh, with that. And he's here to give the Homi Bhava Public Lecture for 2012 on nanoscience and the carbon cycle. So uh, if I may ask you, uh, you know, as scientists we are all familiar with the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. We've heard of it from the cyclotron to the synchrotron source. But uh, for the public, I mean, what do you think are the real highlights of the focus areas of LDR? Okay, sure. Well, first of all, let me just thank you for having this opportunity to spend a couple of days here at the Tata Institute for Fundamental Research. It's a very exciting place, and I've had a wonderful couple of days here. And um, Berkeley Lab has a wide range of research that's going on, and it ranges all the way from very fundamental science, like studying the expansion of the universe, uh, to work that relates to the uh, efficiency of windows to make buildings more energy efficient. So there's a wide range of activities. Um, we focus in areas like uh, the synchrotron, which is uh, an x-ray source that scientists can use to uh, interrogate samples like uh, uh, biological samples to understand how photosynthesis works. We have a large supercomputer that's available to thousands of users a year. So it's a multi-purpose lab with a lot of different activities going on. Um, if there's one overall arching focus to the whole laboratory, it is to, to look at the future of uh, the planet's energy use. Great. So your own research area has been nanoscience. And uh, you know, we've, in the public opinion, there's so much written about nanoscience and nanotechnology. How do you think it's really going to be uh, useful in combating the various challenges that, you know, humanity faces this century? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, we do have a lesson over a really long period of time that advances in fundamental science end up having dramatic impacts in technologies. Uh, just uh, today, as I'm preparing my lecture, I'm thinking about how uh, we're all, of course, uh, aware of the fact that uh, one of the great physicists of the 20th century was Albert Einstein, and many people may not remember that he got his Nobel Prize for the discovery of the photoelectric effect. That's how a solar cell works today. <laughs> so the new renewable energy technology comes from the incredible discoveries that were made uh, decades earlier. And today, the topic of nanoscience is a really current and active area of research that has to do with how we control uh, matter on a very small length scale. And that uh, area of science is going to impact uh, renewable energy in dramatic ways, uh, all the way from making solar cells much lower cost uh, to creating uh, new types of batteries to, we hope, one day artificial photosynthesis, which would be a way of, instead of taking the energy of the sun and making electricity, to directly make a fuel the same way a leaf uh, is able to take uh, sunlight and make uh, uh, sugar using carbon dioxide and water. We would like to be able to make uh, a fuel that we could combust in an engine, but it would be made with solar energy. So nanoscience is going to play a key role in all of those aspects of things uh, in, you know, in the years ahead. Of course, there's a lot of science to do in the meantime, but there's a great track record that shows that these discoveries in very fundamental science will ultimately have big impacts on society. Sounds exciting. Uh, and finally, today is actually 14th of November, is Children's Day in India. Yes. And uh, you know, what are your thoughts on getting kids interested in science. Yes. Well, I'm so excited that it is Children's Day. And if there's one thing that I would like to say to, um, to both children who might happen to come across this, and also to teachers and parents, it's that um, actually uh, all the different uh, children that we come into contact 
our contact with are naturally curious about the world. They will all ask questions. How does this work? Uh, why is it like that? And what we need to do is to encourage that because each one of those people has something special to offer if we encourage them to develop their talent. And uh, they may follow different paths. Some kids may be really good at uh, learning math. Some like to memorize things. Some kids will think in funny ways by making uh, images and pictures in their head. Each one of them has a special talent. And so uh, I, I would encourage all of the teachers to be flexible in how they approach children and to always encourage them to keep their curiosity and uh, never discourage the kids from wanting to learn about the world around them. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts great. with us. And thanks for visiting here once again. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.